Oh boy. So I'm not sure if this is a um fucking kids. <laughs> I don't know if this is a live video or like I mean obviously obviously it's live. I don't know if it's like the midnight special or something. It's not labeled, so I'm just gonna go with the live show. Hi guys, welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. And you know we're back with the good one. It's a Gale pick. Thank you to our alpha patron, Gale H, once again. You already know it's gonna be good if Gale requests it. Uh, we're gonna be listening to Mr. Magic Live by Grover Washington Jr. I believe there's a junior there at the end. Yep, this was released in 1975, uh, the album the same name. Uh, it topped both the soul and jazz album charts and peaked at number 10 on the pop chart too. So three different charts, it was in the top 10. Like that's absolutely crazy. Uh, there was a, mo it's from I guess Motown. The song we're listening to, Mr. Magic, was written by Ralph McDonald, which was um, an American percussionist steel pan virtuoso songwriter musical arranger and record producer i'm guessing he was okay so he did just the two of us by bill withers uh where is the love by roberta flack and donny hathaway and mr magic so that was those were all his compositions um and grover washington is junior is a saxophonist so we're gonna be checking this out thank you gail once again i appreciate your support you're the best I'm going to try and get through your older requests first because, you know, I, I've, I've got so many, but I'm going to get them done. Don't worry. All right. Here we go. Mr. Magic by Grover Washington Jr. Three, two, one, go. Leave a like you and a comment. Too. It really helps. I got something for that ass. Play Freebird. Every time. <laughs> That's right, you gotta do it. Well, you gotta clap your hands. All right. This is the Philly. I know. That's Harvey I'm Mason doing. on the drums, I think. Let me make sure. No, that is not Harvey Mason on the drums. Scratch that. I don't know who that is. Or maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, he looked white at first, and then it's like, wait. Never, never mind. Heavy sound on that hi hat. Tink, tink. Oh man, that is some feel good music. That riff is good too. Who's that? That's is that Eric Gale on guitar. Yeah. Mm. They had the tambourine synced up with that like second hi hat hit. That sounded really cool. Nice accent. Huh. Look at them thick sticks. Tap, tap, tap. Look at that big freaking guitar. That body is huge, oh my god. Holy shit. Got the shaker and the tambourine, my man. Yeah, 
Damn, go ahead, Eric. Overdrive. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that was great. That groove is tight too. What do y'all say to this? What do you say we let Steve and Ralph play? Give the drummers and the percussion a song. Yeah, let's go. All right. Pour one out for the drummers. You got it. Steve is his name? Okay. Is that what I said it was? Ah, uh, yes. Who knew you could get such sound from a cheese grater? <laughs> okay. Got the hammer cushion too? Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Complex shit right there. Ah. Uh. I got a phone call. I'm going to let him listen. Here, this is some good stuff. Yeah. Hey, hold on. <laughs> Whoa, slow mo. Why aren't they showing it? Okay, there we go. Is he like classically trained? Like
very freeform feeling. Ah! Like polyrhythms. <laughs> ah! Right back in, let's go. Ah! Good job, Steve. Whatever it is, Steve your name. There we go. Steven Ralph. Good job, man. Steve and Ralph. Yeah, Ralph McDonald. Okay. So only the guy in the kit is different than the album. I've been waiting for him to fucking go off. Let's go. Rhythms in this song are insane. Well, there's the bass. The basses. Ain't seen him once. Is that the keys player? Yeah. There's a lot of people on stage. <laughs> Oh, he is gnarly, bro. He's playing like John from The Who. That bass is funky. There's a lot of things to like about this. I love it. Don't mind if I do.
Just imagining that reed touching my lips makes me want to just leave this room, I'm not gonna lie. Ugh. Man, they were in for a show that night, huh? And that was live! Tight! Lots of claps today. Donny Osmond? I know that name. So that was on... What show was Donny Osmond that he produced? See, now I gotta look it up. Because now I need to know. Um, Don't you fall. Oh, they're gonna fall. Alright, so... Uh, um. Grover Washington Jr. on the alto sax, soprano sax, and tenor sax. This is for the album that uh, Mr. Magic came out on called Mr. Magic. So I'm just going to read the credits from that. I'm, I believe the only person that was different is Harvey Mason on the drums. He wasn't there for that performance. Um, Bob James on the acoustic piano, Fender Rhodes, arrangements and conductor. Eric Gale on guitar. Uh, it was either Gary King or Phil. Up I think it's Gary King on bass. But there's also a Phil Upchurch, who's on another track. Uh, Harvey Mason on drums, but he was in the drummer here. It was Steve. And then Ralph McDonald on percussion, who was also there. I'm trying to think, was there anyone else that was... I don't... Yeah, no. Um, he had a whole string section, though, for this album, which is pretty awesome, to be honest. I love when you can incorporate, like, orchestral stuff into any genre, be it soul, funk, rock. It don't matter, man. Like, I just love... When you can have those strings backing you up, man, and sometimes that brass too, it just adds like all this depth to the sound that's usually not there when you just have all those other genres by themselves, which they can sound great. But I think I think the beauty is in like the hybrids, you know, it's always great to have a pure strain. Like I'm talking about weed or something. It's always great to have a pure strain, but it's those hybrids, you know, of, you know, that cross pollinating of genres that just um, it hits the sweet spot, you know, and this kind of like checked a lot of boxes it was kind of jazzy at points definitely soul some funk um and a little bit of rock actually thrown in there for good measure uh but that that drummer steve uh he would i don't know if he was like classically trained or he like trained himself like he just like learned himself man I, I don't know but he had a very unique style and how he played um but man he was very heavy on that like second hi-hat hit that was being accented by the tambourine hit at the same time, you know, by the other percussionists. I think his name, what was his name again? It's, oh, God, I'm so bad with names. Ralph McDonald. Um, they are perfectly synced up, man. They That is a tight rhythm section, especially the bass player, too. Uh, the, I always say bass player. The bassist. You didn't see him until the end. He was sitting down, man. Funky as hell. Them thick, the <laughs> thick-ass strings, probably thick-ass fingers, you know, just like Ox and the Who, man. Like, I, I just always... Now that y'all called Ox Thunderfingers, I call every, when I see a bass player play like John, I'm like, oh, Thunderfingers. <laughs> I think it's great, man. Like, that was really, really cool. Um, the sax from Grover was just phenomenal as well. I feel like I've been introduced to so many saxophonists in the past, like, month or two or three that, um, man, and, 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 like, piano players. We've been, like, for the jazzy stuff, funk, soul, whatever, you know, we've been really delving into some like you know stuff that hasn't really been in the modern sense you know actually you know used for much or anything like that because you know that they love to take things from the past and then uh make a shitty version of it or you know just redo it for the 15th time the same exact thing you know i feel like our creativity has just been sapped of us it's like it's being used elsewhere by something else but I don't know, man. The whole spark in the world, I think, is starting to go out. I mean, there's, like I always say, I know, there's pockets of people still doing great things with music, amazing things. But in the wider sense, in the more modern, like, you know, approach of how streaming and the app-based music world works, it's so, I don't know, man. I feel like 
Once you have everything at the click of your fingers, once you can just do anything, listen to anything whenever you want, I think that's an amazing thing, but it also kind of takes away, I think, the special nature that music has, uh, or that it used to, you know? I mean, maybe it'll adapt, and, you know, it always has. You know, music and art always catches up eventually. It's either leaps and bounds ahead of everything else, or it's way behind. It's never on time with things, you know? But that's just art, because art moves at its own pace, as I always say. And, um, I don't know. I liked uh, just this kind of like hybrid, I would say, of things. Uh, my favorite thing in it, though, Eric on the guitars, man. He was ripping it in his solo section. I mean, goodness gracious. Relax, Eric. It's okay. We're home. It's okay. <laughs> he was killing it, dude. And That big ass, like, I don't know if it's like, a, what is that? A Gibson? Is that what that thing is? That big ass fucking guitar? Uh, I got two more. Um, that was, uh, I'm going to see if it'll tell me. Hold on. What does he play? Uh, is that thing? I've seen it in other stuff. Um, he's American jazz, jazz fusion guitarist. Does it say what he plays? Bibliography? No, it doesn't. Um, whatever. I think that big ass thing is um, a Gibson. I, or I don't think it's Les Paul. That's, I don't know. Um, I'm not real well versed in like a lot of like, old guitar knowledge even modern guitar stuff i really don't pay attention to gear as much like for that kind of stuff uh but i think that thing was beautiful it reminded me of like a rickenbacker bass sort of thing but it was a guitar instead i know that i've seen it before in all like the older you know videos i've seen it you know played multiple times and i've always been fascinated by seeing it i'm like that thing is huge <laughs> are your shoulders and back okay you know but he killed it man he was ripping that shit um Drummer was great. I, I don't. I've, I didn't catch his last name, but I think his name, his name was Steve. Steve. Steve was just killing it too. Uh, didn't see much of the bass player, but he was there. He was heard, and once he was seen, uh, definitely killed it, man. Like like I said, Thunderfingers and uh, Grover was fantastic as well. So she opened the door when I wasn't looking, and then she just tried to close it. <laughs> Silly girl. Um, but yeah, thank you, Gail. That was great. I'm definitely down for any other stuff from Grover Washington Jr. Or any of these guys, let me know down below. If you got any other tracks, uh, definitely will check it out. Thanks for watching. Patreon, right there. There's a link in the description. If you join the $15 tier or up, you get one free request a month. But just for this month only. In August, it's changing. Not by much, though. Don't worry. Um, I'm just going to have to, like, change the meta of things because there's so many requests now. I'm going to have to, like, put a cap on things. Like, you know, I'm just, like, working on some ideas of, like, how to make things easier for all of us, you know, and myself included, but also you guys. Because um, this process that we have is, um, it works usually very well if you guys do what you're supposed to do and I do what I'm supposed to do, but then we both don't do that sometimes. So things get lost in the shuffle and, uh, that's just how things work though. And, uh, I will always try to correct whatever mistake I make or anything like that. You guys know that, um, I really value and respect all of my audience. Like I really do. You guys, <laughs> you guys have no idea how bad some of the communities on this platform are. And you guys are probably the, one of the best ones I've ever seen. Like I'm not even tooting my own horn. I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? You guys did this. I just, I, I just work here. You know what I'm saying? I know that I may, whatever, attract certain people because I talk about things that most people don't, you know, and, uh, I kind of just ramble on, I got a lot of stuff stored up here, you know? So it kind of, it's interesting sometimes, you know, and then sometimes it's like, shut the fuck up, Lee. What are you talking about? I got one more. And, um, yeah, that is it. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Gail. Patreon. <laughs> just kidding um there's also a uh paypal and cash app in the description if you want to leave a tip or request that way thanks for watching guys i'll see y'all later